catharsis. It's uh, through poetry, it's uh, therapeutic both to the poet and to the readers. Do you know that uh, in Exeter University, London, the students are asked to go to old age homes and read poems to the old people. Because research shows that when people come across familiar lines, it helps curing dementia, helps become reconnecting the old memories that they have otherwise lost. And it's not just the patient, it's the poet himself who often go through a lot of internal conflict, a lot of day-to-day stress, a lot of demons that literature presents itself. That case, a lot of images come to the mind of the poet. And the images can be from anywhere. Of course, nature is the primary source. And through nature, the poet picks up the words that flow onto the paper like clouds. Now, talking about clouds, let's pick up an image, water. Water in many religions, in many myths, in many cultures, is known to be significant to healing. It takes away a lot from inside you. It takes away the pain, it washes away the angst, the darkness, the other kind of frustration that is seated deep inside you. That's why a lot of people love to sit near the river banks, put their feet in the water and feel a very different kind of feeling, which works on subconscious levels. So for a poet, when he or she goes on river banks or on a beach, it's a very different feeling. And when you come across poets, you will come across some sea poem, some ocean poem, or some river poem. So the poem that I'm going to present, I wrote it on the beach of Indian Ocean. I had gone to Maldives for an assignment. I'm a journalist also by profession. So I present the poem. It's called The Ocean Never Returns Our Names. I wrote our names in cursive, curly, nastalic, clinging to each other tightly, infinitely, kissing shells, anemones, tips of coral reefs, stories the ships and starfish bring to the shores. The ocean polishes our names, gently strokes the forest within the morphemes, where metaphors rain mingling with the green waters, bleaching our hearts of pain, of past, of erased histories, Waves bow, holding the letters on their foreheads. Sail back, rise, and add our names to the treasure the history is bereft of. We glisten on the stars that lurk above waters, waiting forever for Laila to return Majnu, his original name. None of us can deny that nature can be very encompassing and, and just engulfs us in its folds. In fact, uh, going ahead from nature, it's also our own experiences and our own moments. If you go down your memory lane, you will have enough instances and uh, anecdotes or moments where you connect and it's just enough to bring a smile. Yes, and a smile sometimes is just about enough to tell you that fine, move on, you will come to terms with it. A very simple example could be of uh, childhood. Now, how many of us here, I'm sure none of us here, but still I would like to ask, how many of us will deny that any time you pass a child, be it in the neighborhood or in the trains or the buses or wherever you go, and you see a child indulging in his innocent antics, you can't resist a smile. None of us can deny that. We definitely go pass by a smile, of course, so long the child doesn't poop in your lap. But can be anybody's child also, neighbor's child. But, uh, but well, that luxury of not pooping is not available to a mother. So what a mother does, like I, I have a seven-year-old daughter. So along with the poops and the peas and everything, as a, as a dutiful mother who looks forward to collecting the memories of her child, I dutifully note down all the milestones. She walked, she crawled, she babbled, she giggled and everything. And somewhere in the process there are stories she, you know, she just spins and spins and well, there's a huge collection to that. Sometimes going back, reading them, since I have a habit of noting them down, and reading them just kindles a smile that just, uh, you know, lightens your head and you know that let's move on, this time too shall pass and we'll overcome whatever is, is there right at that moment. So there is this small poem which I wrote for her. She's my little fairy, so a fairy's tale. Caressing the mirror, you bend your head backwards, wish for your curl locks to kiss your knees. 
You wish to shade them in Barbie pink. I undo your knotted strands slowly, one by one, your tales, fantasies, and dreams. You narrate the story of Rapunzel in plush shades of your new vocabulary and comb a rainbow, cocooning me in you, never gray. All it takes is a brush stroke and you to paint this naked journey. And no matter how old we are, the child inside us never rests, never sleeps, it's always waiting to come out. And when it comes out to the fullest, when it rains outside. Especially all of us who are confined into nine to five jobs or worse, or 24 into seven jobs like me, I have to run on a call being uh, in media and always up there for a story. So what happens when it rains outside and you're trapped? You're trapped inside a cubicle which is cold, silent. What you hear is only clitter clatter of the keyboard. Your mouse is moving and it's raining outside. And everything is washed with clarity and it's dancing and people are enjoying. What do you do then? You just go out. You feel like going out. You can't go out because your work is calling you and you have to stay back in the office. So a couple of years back, I was working on a report and I was filing it and it started to rain. I so badly wanted to go out, I could not. So in the middle of the report came this poem. And talking about childhood, it's our mother tongue also, which takes back to those little tiny years when the teacher comes to your house, teaches you maybe Hindi, Malayalam, Telugu, English, Urdu, whatever. My mother tongue is Urdu and I also speak a lot of Hindi. So this poem I wrote in Hindi and Urdu and it's on rain. The title goes as Barish. Rupehli barish pedon ko nehlati meri khidpi pe bhi aa thehri hai khilkhila kar jhaank rahi hai andar maine uski taraf dekha to uski chandi ke sikko si hansi bikhar gayi charon or inme se ek sikka mera bhi hai jo kabhi chhupa tha hare hare amrood ke pedon par jo lapak kar awaaz deta tha aur sawar ho jata tha meri kagaz ki kashti mein तैरती हुई छोटे से एक दरिया में जो बहता ठीक मेरे बरामदे के नीचे फूल जुगनू और एक पीली छोटी सी तितली लदे उस नन्ही सी डगमग करती कागज की कश्ती पे आंखों से आहिस्ता आहिस्ता ओझल होने लगते तैयार बादल के उस पार जाने को छमछम करती बारिश अपने आंचल को लहराती अपने लब खोलती गाने को खेलती और मचलती मेरी खिड़की से मेरी अलमारी में आने को बाहर आज भी मचल रही है मेरी नोटबुक पे बिखर जाने को लेकिन किसी खिड़की का शीशा रोक लेता है उसको अपने सीने पर और कहता है ठहर जाने को क्योंकि कांच के उस पार एसी की मध्यम आवाज़ और कीबोर्ड की खटखट का तालमेल बिगड़ जाएगा टिप टिप करती बूंदों के आ जाने से खिड़की के शीशे की बाहों में तड़पती है बारिश किसी भरी आंख से आंसू की तरह फिसल जाने को वाह क्या बात दिस इज द ब्यूटी ऑफ व्हाट मदर टंग डस आई डेंट गेट एनी क्लास सो दिस इज व्हाट happens when we try to face our own emotions in order to deal with them especially our own personal experiences but how cathartic you think it would be if you are put in someone else's shoe and to experience what perhaps you have and they don't have a small example of that could be what if you have to spend a few hours being blind one of a major senses i stalk i speak i dance i sing that's what eyes do to us and we had a dancer before us who demonstrated that so beautifully what if i had to tell you that try to experience if you're blind what does that experience teach you now how many of you have been to this restaurant called dialogue in the dark quite a few number i would recommend that please go and visit that restaurant simply for the experience of it now when i went there the the menu is set that there are blind stewards blind not blind folded blind stewards who escort you inside make them uh, make you sit and serve the food it's absolutely dark 
pitch dark an experience of what or how that world could be. Now, how do you take this as an experience? For me, personally speaking, it choked my senses. I couldn't eat my food properly, but when I came out, there was a sense of realization that perhaps we get too bogged down by our own troubles and we feel that why am I the only one on the receiving end? When perhaps there are people who are trying to view the entire world or live that entire world with just few of those senses which perhaps with which I am gifted with. So this was a poem I wrote after I visited the restaurant called Dialogue in the Dark and it's titled Eclipse. Dark, darker. My eyeballs flit superlatives. I follow you behind a shoulder, leading me, leading the other, the other and the other. Walls sandpaper my fingers. We curve deeper into acuity of a room, inlit, inky. I tap sit on a powder coated chair, trace grains of varnish on the table, curving at the corners and count the chirps of a bird, faceless and nameless. You serve me the menu, order to ring porcelain of a partition plate as the rim runs along with my finger dripping warm dew on a coarse circular mat. The wattle bottle pricks clutched in my left hand, pitch dark, blackout. I sit now on the other side. A whiff of steamed rice sifts an ensemble on my tongue. Salivated lumps are pushed down my throat. I would have otherwise dissected, mashed and crushed them amidst the tenderness of crunching cucumbers and tap danced to music seeping into this aura. The scent of bomb lime soaks the oil from my hands. Do you dream? Do you cringe? Do you fear? Do you fathom shadows? I breathe too. Your voice smiles a diamond ring. Your non-sightedness silvers a mirror. My unbecoming of judgment by sight. I return holding the emptied water bottle to become Gandhari again in the light of a hundred suns. Thank you. And uh, talking about catharsis, putting yourself in somebody else's shoes sounds both easy and tough. How about like she said that being a blind person and you go in darkness and see that you're fumbling with a lot of objects around you, that also serves a sort of catharsis because we all are struggling with our stress day-to-day -day life basis and we have a lot of problems of our own. But I won't say it will disappear, you can minimize the effect by thinking about somebody else who is struggling with a much, much bigger problem. So talking about people who do not have vision, I have a poet friend called Josna Faneja and she is also a professor in Delhi University. The poems that she writes about are full of light, colors, she writes about a lot of flowers, a lot of butterflies, rainbows, a lot of uh, clouds, the sunshine, early morning, daytime. I just sometimes sit and feel how she might be feeling when she is drafting a poem, especially when she is writing about colors and uh, what colors seem to her. So I just asked her, what do colors mean to you? She said, I just go and ask uh, Rose its name. Maybe the rose is telling me I'm black. So I go ahead and write it as black. Now how beautiful is that? So what she experienced was of pain. What I experience here in this poem that I'm going to present is of joy. Because whatever this lady who is a poet and is uh, visually, she is troubled, she can see things in her own light, which I, being a sighted person, cannot see. A lot of things mean very different to me and very different to her. Yet I see her very happy. She is full of life and she smiles and she talks about a lot of joyous things. It's titled Ceramic Vases of Chunar. Why I have titled it Ceramic Vases of Chunar is because Josna comes from a village of Andhra where a ceramics factory are there and she has experienced a lot of dust, a lot of problems and the way she talks about it is very different and her next book is also titled that, Ceramic Evening. So, I present the point Ceramic Vases of Chunar. Ceramic Vases of Chunar shape the streets of my childhood. A kingdom of clay cups hinged on a poem. The sleeping trees give screen shadows to puddles. Paper boats whisper forbidden, forbidden hymns to the light confined in rainwater. Tiny vases on a reed mat pucker their lips to the sunlight. 
unwrap its seven colors and know that light cannot erase darkness, the black stars within. The goal of dawn covering kingdom of darkness is a myth. Its denizens don't care to pick golden slivers. They have their legends safe, buried in onyx deep, fossilized roses more ancient than the dancing girl of Mohenjo-daro. The dark mouths of Chunavasas drink the day the red clay. In their bellies stay warm Mughals crossing Ganga and Shatvahana splashing Godavari. Their kingdoms are now faded glaze. They pass from a potter's dreams to jasmine fingers of Jyotsna, who strokes the curved shape, the tiny handles, the bosky feel. She puts her words inside, scoops the space. It is a cool shadow under the scent of kachna trees. She pulls its yarns, sits and knits sweet darkness. Hope, happiness. Finally, if not to conclusion, that's what we seek at the end, even through this journey of emotional catharsis. So this is called the ladies compartment, because there you mirror yourself with the co-passengers. Well, it's not only for the ladies, I hope even the men would uh, find themselves mirroring themselves as co-passengers, where we all are somewhere together with strangers, still sharing a bond somewhere. So this is the ladies compartment. We are a motley crowd with handbags, laptops and lunch bags, sporting IDs of rings and tourings, buffering dark circles for unwaxed conversation of etc. in food, fabric, finance, family. We manicure safety and freedom in lip gloss songs, hina cones and swipes of Facebook and WhatsApp on the phone. Nasal calls of peanut and samosa vendors are flipped by in bookmark pages hoping that one day a rainbow would find the puffed eyes gazing emptily at the window. Our laughter indulges an anonymous company of dry sweat and aura of our anatomy. We waltz with a body mass index, pH of pimples, dimples and wrinkles, on pedicured sandals, cracked slippers, stiff joints and a numb lower back. We are one in many, many in one. Soon we would slumber to cricket songs, leaving the lady in the welcome poster near the door to rattle alone with empty shadows. Tomorrow will be a new dawn sunscreened with another ticket for this daily soap in the ladies' compartment. Thank you. Thank you. What a journey and a journey we take every day and this journey of life that we are progressing ahead. So through catharsis, we learn we progress ahead in a good way and you fight both your demons and angels some point of time. Sometimes you have to make choices, sometimes you have to leave something behind. And what better way to do this than to have poetry in your hands, maybe a song, maybe a couplet, maybe a poem, or just browse through some nursery rhymes from your child. That is also a very beautiful poem and that awakens the small child within you and takes you forward. So I ask you people to keep fighting the demons, keep smiling, keep traveling and keep progressing ahead. And I conclude this with a couplet I wrote a couple of years back. Jo mordo rukh tez aandhiyon ka, to safar apna hai, karma apna hai. 